There's my buddy Henry. He's usually out here early in the mornings, fishing away. Good morning, welcome to another video. I wanted to do a short video on five things that most photographers know. If you don't know, you probably should. Now, a lot of times these things are my opinions, opinions that are probably shared by a lot, maybe not by everyone, but they're my opinions, so you can take it for what it's worth. One of, watching these birds, one of the ones that's not in the top five, but YouTube people will know, sometimes you're filming these videos and you lose a shot. Right before I turned this on, I was looking in this direction over here with this tree, and I didn't even know it. There was an osprey sitting at the top of the tree, and uh, he flew down, like right here, almost right in front of me, grabbed a fish and went off with it. And I didn't get the shot because I was fiddling around with this camera. So. These things happen. What are you going to do, huh? And then my buddy Henry the Heron, who was over there fishing, now he moved. He's sitting right there on the coastline, so I'm going to have to pay attention to him. Anyway, <clears throat> these five things, I'm popping them off the top of my head. I thought about them on my walk over here. Of course, I'll probably forget one of them. Screw it up. The first thing everybody should know, and people who have been around the block a few times do know, is that... Don't expect to be this great photographer overnight. It takes time to learn and develop. So don't get frustrated if right out of the box you go out and you buy this fancy camera and you take it out and you're thinking, why are my images not sharp? Why are they not looking the way I want them to? Why are the faces so bright and the background too bright or the background too dark or vice versa? Or why are all these things happening? Well, you have to learn these things over time and you have to be a little patient. And it is going to take you a little time. So stick with it. Have some patience. And learn about photography. Tip number two, and that is, even with these fancy cameras that essentially take the photo for you, it's critical that you learn your relationship between your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. It, it's just critical. If you really want to learn about photography and you want to end up being a good photographer, learn the relationship between those three things and learn what each one of them really does. You know, a shutter speed, how it can slow the action or stop the action depending on what it is you want to do. Like I'm out here photographing birds, most of the time I'm going to want to stop the action. I want those, those wings sharp if they do decide to fly off. Now if they're just waiting in the water, you don't need quite as fast of a shutter speed. However, understand that if you don't need quite as fast of a shutter speed, maybe you can change your ISO. You know, maybe you can, instead of like I usually shoot these birds, even though there's some light out here in the morning, I'm usually at ISO 500 or 800. If they're waiting and I don't need a fast shutter, maybe I can go down to ISO 200 or 400 and understand why I can say that and, and what the importance between the relationship of those things are. It's important you know those things. Anyway, ultimately, if you really want to get the image on paper or on your computer that you have in your head, if you understand the relationship between the shutter, your ISO, and your aperture, you're gonna know how to get it. And depending on what it is you're shooting, if you're shooting sports or wildlife, or you need to understand your shutter speed and what it does. I gotta be honest with you, I get a little surprised when people have been doing photography for a number of years, still don't understand that. They don't understand the relationship between those three things and I it kind of surprises me when I when I hear that 
So I'm sure there are plenty of YouTube videos that'll explain that to you. Plenty of books have been written on it. Um, to me, that's critical to go and learn that. Number three would be to understand light. Photography is the study of light. And you, you need to understand that. You need to understand when you, depending on what it is you're trying to photograph, maybe when the best time of day is to photograph. You know, landscape photographers always, well, sunrise, sunset. Yes, in a large extent, that's true. It's not 100% true. Some guys like to go out midday because they like shadows. Maybe they're black and white photographers and they prefer harsher light. I, I don't know. It depends, but you, you need to understand light. Um, street photographers in particular are very good for the most part at understanding light because they, they uh, well, some of them want to shoot faces and people in the streets, obviously, but others are very good at getting shadows and creating atmosphere with the light against buildings or whatever it is they're trying to do. There's a fellow by the name of Alan Schaller, who is, uh, and, and there are others. It's not just Alan, there's plenty of them around. But Alan, I'm just uh, using his name in particular, is, is just excellent at understanding light. Next tip, don't get caught up in being a gearhead, especially in the beginning. And what I mean is, don't worry about, you gotta have, the perfect lens and the perfect camera and everything that goes along with that. Learn the ones that you have. You know, learn about the basics of photography and learn what you can afford. And worry about some of the other stuff later. Now, that's not to say that people that aren't really into gear can't be good photographers. Of course they can be. And I'm sure many of them are. But the flip side is it doesn't mean if you don't know about a lot of that stuff that you can't take good images because you certainly can. But the point is, unless you're like a, a product photographer and you're known for certain lighting and, and uh, you have a lens that gives you a certain aesthetic that you like, that's a little bit different than just going out and shooting images, whether you're a landscape guy or whatever. Now, are some cameras better than others and some lenses better than others? Of course. But I'll bet you there are a lot of Leica Q2 shooters. And for anyone that doesn't know, Leica Q has a fixed lens. Can't take it off, it's one lens. I think it's 28 millimeters. And they go out and use it for street photography they probably don't know a whole lot more, or at least some of them, any more than, hey, this, this camera was recommended for street photographers. I'm sure some of them really know and understand a like a product, but I bet you there's probably just as many that were just told, hey, yeah, it's worth the eight grand or 10 grand or whatever they are, seven grand to have that camera if you really want to be a good street photographer and they just go out and buy it and they create good images. Me personally, do I get caught up in it at times? Absolutely, guilty as charged. I also don't keep a lot of my cameras and lenses. I really try to hone in on, you know, what is it I'm photographing at this particular time in my life and I try to find the equipment that helps me do that the best. Like, uh, let's say 10, 15 years ago, I used to shoot a lot of high school sports. And yeah, I wish I had a Z8 or a Z9 back then. I didn't, I had a, a D700, which in back in that day was great for uh, shooting sports. So I had the camera and I had a 28 to 200 F2.8 lens. Actually, I had the 80 to 200 F2.8 lens. And I had a couple of fast primes because for basketball, even though I used the 80 to 200, I also used an 85-18 because sometimes you get in these gyms and the lighting is just awful and you really have to be down at F2, F22, 
to to really uh, stop the action so that you didn't have to go all the way up and, and go to say ISO uh, 1600 because the D700 though it was okay it wasn't great at ISO 1600 compared to some of the cameras today but the point is try to find the equipment that does what you need it to do so eventually I you know got off the 80 to 200 because now I'm mostly landscape a little bit of these birds travel and so you know I have a 20 millimeter prime I have a 50 millimeter prime I have 85 millimeter prime and I have the 24 to 120 and then I have this 70 to 300 for uh, these birds but I end up using the 24 to 120 a lot of times too you know I could probably pare it down to three lenses if I had to and one camera body but I have a second camera body because sometimes I shoot infrared don't do it maybe as much as I should but you know I got into it a little bit and uh, so I may or may not keep that camera body in the uh, in the long run but I wanted to try it out so it's more understand there's a difference between being a gearhead and really grinding down and understanding the aesthetics of every lens versus just understanding what it is you like to photograph and what's the best camera and lenses that will help you achieve that and you'll learn that over time you know I start the video with saying that it takes time well this is one of the things that it takes time you're gonna learn that you had a particular lens maybe you're not using it like I just got rid of the 105 macro I wanted to try it out but I don't shoot a lot of macro and I hate for it to just sit there so you know I sold it off and put the money towards something else so learn that I mean I'm constantly uh, trying out different lenses and buying and selling them one thing that uh, here's a tip for you one thing that people don't understand or are afraid of I think is you know they're afraid of buying things off eBay or or even directly from Japan I bought several lenses from Japan and you know oh maybe they don't have a a US warranty on them but the lenses are 20 years old you know uh, and if you buy them over here in the States especially the old Nikon lenses it might cost you three hundred dollars you might be able to get it off somebody in Japan for 150 180 and I got news for you uh, I don't I'm not trying to stereotype but the lenses that I get from Japan are always like they're immaculate they take very good care of their equipment or at least the ones that I've bought so don't be afraid to take a shot I mean if it's only a few hundred bucks you know you buy one from eBay and it's coming from Japan uh, I've, I've had really good luck with that and then I use them for a little bit and turn around and sell them here and get all my money back and sometimes I even make 50 bucks so don't be afraid of buying something from Japan another thing is shooting in black and white is your friend learning to shoot in black and white it really is it'll teach you a lot about color photography and I'm probably not the best at explaining why maybe just because I shot black and white photography for many years before I went to digital and started shooting sports and and I still convert a lot of things to black and white uh, I just think it has a certain look to it a certain appeal it will if you understand black and white it gives you a, a very um, a deeper appreciation for tones and separation between the tones and it all goes back to Ansel Adams own system if you get a book and read a little bit about or even watch a video on Ansel Adams zone system even though he's for the most part speaking in black and white it'll help you with color and it will help you if you there's there's many times even when I'm walking around this lake shooting birds when I look at things like I go out here and look at this landscape over here the seascape whatever you want to call it lakescape 
Uh, I see it in black and white. Even though it's in color, I'm looking at the tones. I'm looking at uh, where that water is still, where it's going to get you a blacker shot. If you go and look at a couple of my other videos, uh, in particular on the birds, you'll see I converted a lot of them to black and white. I, I just think that there's a certain appeal to it. So shoot black and white for a while. Learn black and white. Learn your tones. Learn the zone system. If you know those two, th two things that I've mentioned in this video, how to shoot in manual to control your own ISO, shutter, and aperture, you don't always have to shoot in manual, but if you can and you understand, like I shoot in manual 99% of the time, I just do. Uh, I'm not saying I'm right or wrong, I'm just saying for me in particular because I learned that way, I'm just used to it. And that's how I know how to control the light the best in shooting in manual. There were times when I was shooting sports, I would shoot shutter priority. But here again, you have to understand why I say that. Most of you probably do that are watching this video, but some of you might not. It's important to know that. If you learn the relationship between your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter, and learn the zone system, you'll be amazed at how much better your photography will get. Just those two things. And I haven't even, I haven't even mentioned composition and, and those kind of things. Of course, they're all, uh, maybe equally important some might say more important I don't know but for me learning how to shoot manual learning the zone system and understanding what a black and white image will do for you don't get too caught up in your gear but understand your gear and what it is you need to get that image for the genre of photography that you want to take those things are pretty important I would say lastly just learn to have fun with your camera. You know, go out and enjoy it. So I appreciate you all watching and taking the time. I know a lot of people have busy schedules. If you liked anything, please like and subscribe. And uh, go watch some of my other videos. I'd sure appreciate it. So thanks for watching and take good care.